Okay, I'm gonna start. Uh, so, how long has everyone here been doing something related to Drupal? How long? Two years? Mm -hmm. One year. One year? Just installed it. Just installed it? Five minutes. Five minutes? Yeah, four months. Four months. Excellent. Uh, I just began dabbling in Drupal very recently. I am um, Harish Karadia. I work for uh, Medtronic. Uh, it's a medical device maker up in Northridge. And uh, I also um, consult from time to time for in the field of usability. I'm by my core skill set, I'm a user experience designer, usability engineer, and I try to make anything easy to use. This happens to be web applications in my current job. And so I have loved dabbling in usability, landing page optimization, conversion rate optimization. And I love uh, Drupal and WordPress for its native SEO uh, that it gives, um, for the markup that it creates, and how search engines rank those, that markup very high. So that's an overview. Um, my, I am still starting up on Drupal. I'm much more uh, fluent in WordPress. And this is the reason I stumbled upon. I, I just put in a request to do this presentation a week and a half ago. And the reason for that is um, I was trying to install Drupal. I, I had my Amazon EC2 instance fired up. And I would have, was running into issues with my, my, with my SQL server yeah. on uh, my Amazon instance, and then I, I went down the road of installing Postgres instead and bringing the site up completely in Postgres. And so I thought it would be a great uh, presentation to share with the community about how I use EC2 to uh, do this and see if uh, you guys have any inputs, if you guys like this. This will also show you how. Um, if, if you have a client or if you are working for a client, how quick you can do this deployment in production on EC2. So, okay. so I'm not going to cover in this tutorial, I'm not going to cover how to start up your account on EC2. I have a blog post here um, about how to start an EC2 Ubuntu uh, server for your developer in six minutes. Uh, I will post all this, all these materials and this session is going to, is getting recorded right now and this will be on this, uh, the LA Drupal page for this presentation. Um, so I'm, uh, what I did was initially I took, I, I signed up for the account of Amazon EC2 and then I took an uh, elastic image of Ubuntu. Elastic, Eric Heyman, um, elastic.com, is the person who published uh, machine images of Ubuntu in all EC2 zones. Okay, he has published several of these images. And what you see here is, a 32-bit server, a 64-bit server, mine is a 32-bit, so base server. Um, I am on 910, so he has the latest 1004 release of Ubuntu. And that is the AMI. The AMI ID is the machine ID. So when, once you're signed up for Amazon EC2 and you say request an instance, and you want to find his machine, where is this machine? You just take this, put it in there, and eventually it will bring up, I should probably search for machine ID, uh, maybe this, and it will try to find that, right there. So, once, so this is something that has been loaded in the Amazon EC2 environment by him. Eric Heyman has loaded it. And once you click select, it will start you through a process of starting the server up. Okay. However, I have created my own custom image 
and I have another post for that, how to create a custom backup and launch your own custom image, uh, EC2 Ubuntu image from S3. So I have created a custom image of my machine, stored it in S3, and I'm going to use that image to fire things up, and I will tell you why I'm doing this as I go along. So the process is pretty straightforward, so go interface. If you want, if you guys ever want to start a machine that has to connect to another machine within EC2, mm -hmm. you have to remember one thing. In this place, you want to select the same availability zone. But selecting the same availability zone as the other server may cause a delay in starting of the instance. Because Amazon may not have those resources, that server available in that zone. My, uh, sometimes my spot instance has not spawned for three to four hours if I put one B uh, for that, but I won't do that, I will leave it, no preference. Why do you need that? Because if you start something in another availability zone and if your machines talk to each other, you are going to start paying for bandwidth across the two zones. Mm -hmm. So your cost will go higher if you don't, if you are not careful about that selection. So uh, what you see here is I'm requesting a spot instance. A spot instance is different from an on-demand instance as in it can go down at any point in time. But you can see the current bid price for the spot instance is 3.1 cents. I'm going to bid at 0 0.05, 50 cents or 5 cents per hour. This is a per hour price. Okay, I'm gonna say continue. I'm gonna, this doesn't matter to me right now. Keep it, I'm gonna say game. Okay, for people who are new at this, and I, uh, the first blog post that I was pointing to walks you through this. This is a very important step. If you don't have a key pair, you are allowed to create a key pair and download one on your machine. And it, you have to read the Amazon AWS documentation for first time use of this key pair. Because Amazon by itself, you cannot connect without a key pair in your local path to your own instance. And if you don't know that, you are going, you are wasting your, you will be wasting a few hours before you are able to connect to your instance. Now, the other reason why I'm just breezing through this is because my custom image that I have created in my SSHV con configuration file, I have switched on SSH from any host. Okay, so I don't need a key pair to log into my own instance. Okay. I'm going to select the default security group. And I'll also tell you how this can impact later on down the road. And I'm going to submit this. Okay, this will take a couple of minutes. So while this instance is being prepared and the algorithm has to determine which availability zone this server is put in. Um, basically, a lot of questions are about, uh, I've heard a lot of horror stories about a lot of novices going to Amazon EC2 and they're racking up several uh, thousands of dollars in bills and what have you. And if you're, if, again, this is like any, anything else, if you play with fire, right, if uh, fire can be used to cook your food and you know, it can burn down the house as well. So, uh, you have to be very careful. You have to, uh, Amazon's documentation is very, very good in this uh, instance. And you can find the, a detailed documentation. Okay, somewhere in here. Documentation, user guides. you go here. So this has a step-by-step -step instructions of how to set EC2 up, your machines up, your connections to your Windows, Linux instances. 
Okay, I highly recommend you going through this. Before, Amazon didn't have the slick console interface. When they, I mean, even a year and a half ago, this AWS console has improved dramatically and they are still making so many more improvements. They are trying, they have a lot of command line things that they are doing, they are asking the users to do. They took some of those things off and put a GUI in front of it on a web. So this really helps a lot. Okay, so when the instance is done, it will say it's active in this part of the, it's a spot instance request, it's active. And what we have then, if you go to your instances, so it's spawning the instance. It is preparing the instance. What it is doing right now is it has a machine, a virtual machine that has been made available. It is taking my um, image that I told it when, when I began the process. It is taking my image from S3, binding it to the machine and firing the machine up right now. So I, I get lucky, it's still in US East 1B. My other reserved instance is in 1B. If I needed the spot instance to connect to my reserved instance, I will not incur bandwidth charges on that. So I got lucky in this case. I don't get lucky all the time like that, but. Okay. okay, it's up and running now. Okay. So, is everyone familiar with what is the public IP of your Amazon machine? Okay, so when you spawn a machine and it's running, click on it and come scroll down, then you will see public DNS. Those numbers are your public IP of your machine. That is how you know. So don't go and buy elastic IP addresses. You don't have to buy them. You have a static IP address assigned to you for, for by Amazon when you spawn this. Okay. So I am now that the machine is up, I will try to SSH into the machine with the user ID and password that I had saved up in the custom instance. So it's asking me for a fingerprint connection established. Okay, it's asking me for my password now. And I'm in. This is my brand new machine that I just spawned as a spot instance request. From now on, I will go to show you how we go on to get the LAMP stack on here and how to then install the alpha 6 of Drupal 7. I have steps right here and I will try to explain along each step. I am going to run app get update which essentially updates all the sources from where Ubuntu gets its updates from. Okay. It's done. This step, I'm going to install Apache PHP, the PHP 5 graphic library, the connection between Apache and PHP, Postgres, and the connection uh, library between PHP and Postgres. Yes, so this tutorial was based on Postgres. The reason was I ran into a lot of issues to uh, get into my MySQL instance, which I eventually figured out. Uh, but that's why this is a different installation. Sure, I will. Okay. So I hit continue. It's updating all that.
one last piece of installation of the Postgres. Starting the Postgres server. And it's done. It's done with all the basic installations. If you now, actually, if you need, we, most of us, when we do Drupal sites, we will need clean URLs. When you need clean URLs, you need to enable mod rewrite in Apache. This step does that. Okay, and it asks me to restart Apache, which right now I'm probably going to hold off on. I'm going to do this one piece in Apache, which is to override. I'm going to now restart Apache. I'm going to log in for the super user of Postgres and set up, uh, do some Postgres related installation. So I'm going to create a Drupal 7 user on for, for this and I'm going to enter a password of 236 Shall that? Okay. Now we are going to create a database on Postgres, which uh, the user that we just created has access to. Okay, that's done. We then exit out of this, and we need to do some configuration on the Postgres. Comment this out. I need to add the kind of authentication our database, our database user is going to use to connect to Postgres. We'll just restart Postgres at this point. Let's start. Now we begin the process of getting the alpha 6 of Drupal 7. Just need and select that. And it's loading it in my home directory. I'm going to unzip it. Excuse me. When did you uh, assign the um, domain name, the URL? Okay, so for this presentation, I am not binding a URL or domain name to Apache. I can do that very easily in the apache.com I was in, where I can say server name uh, in the server name directory and it will listen to that and I have to make sure my godaddy.com or control panel, DNS panel, I point it to the server IP. Okay, so you're just using this for your own personal use? Yes. The, so I have another server which I'm using for uh, a full domain name. It's a, I have a domain name I pointed to EC2 and it renders content from it. But I guess I'm, I'm not that familiar with um, EC2, but I noticed you did five cents for an hour, is that? So that's so I have billed at five cents an hour. Oh, yeah. I'm actually being billed at 3.1 cents an hour. Okay. Because the current price is 3.1 cents an hour. If the price increases to four cents, I will be billed at four cents. If the price decreases to two cents an hour, I'm going to be billed at that decrease rate. If it goes above five cents an hour, my machine will be shut off without advance notice. Oh, wow. So this is a spot instance. I'm using a spot instance for the demo purposes. If you do an on-demand instance, which is an 8.5 cents an hour machine, it is there with you forever. 
If you do a reserved instance for three years, at $350 for three years and 3.1, 3 cents uh, every hour after that, it is with you forever. It will not go down on you. It's an allocated machine to you. What do you call that? So that is the reserved instance. Reserved. Reserved instance. And then you have the on-demand instance. And then this one is the spot instance. So what about the scalability? I'm sorry? Scalability. So. Okay. So if... So for scalability, there is something else in EC2 called uh, auto scaling and you can enable auto scaling on your account and along with auto scaling, you, what you have to do is then you specify, say for example your CPU goes above 50% of your machine 1. Fire up machine 2 with this image, there is a rule that you can set up in auto scaling and it's a one time rule and it says fire up another server, bring it up and you have an elastic load balancer that you also fire up with that and the elastic load balancer will balance the traffic between the two machines similarly, it will downscale for you the load balancer, the um, elastic load balancer you, if you specify that, hey, if machine wants uh, both the capacity is 20-25% shut off machine 2 because you don't want to incur those charges on machine 2 Right? So, auto scaling enables you to do that. Okay, so we have downloaded and unzipped the theme. And now I'm going to uh, create a directory for Drupal and move all my unzipped files. to that location. You need to create a settings.php file. I think Drupal, sh in the base install, they should do it for us. I don't know why they don't do this and make us do this, but okay. No such file or directory, of course not. Done. I'm gonna say seven here. So I am then uh, assigning a new user and making it on that file. Also, I'm gonna say this is actually we can combine these two. This is another thing. Every installation of Drupal, you have to create this files folder. They should just do it when you explode it and do the requisite things. Again, a usability guy talking here. And then we want to give the ownership to the right. Of course not. Okay, and I need to now make the necessary connection entries in oh shoot. the settings.php of Drupal to enable it to connect to our Postgres instance. Okay. Okay, so the first entry in the settings.php file uh, that is uncommented at least as the database uh, connection parameter. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to add our own entry there. And I have to make sure, so I'm going to have all our tables 
we call drew7 underscore this is localhost and the oh, not. Okay. that's my password that I assigned when I set this up my machine seems to have hung I hope my internet connection has not died okay let me see okay no. it's just not responding Okay, we have a use recover. I thought I had that in my clipboard. So this is the entry we need. And I'm going to I'm having some Unix problems, obviously. Make sure this closed properly. Okay, cool. That was a. Okay, I'm gonna have to change. Actually, gonna make it. Be I have changed. What I am doing here is I'm changing the memory limit, even though it's a 16M, to 512M, uh, so that it can allocate more. I have run into issues with keeping the memory limit at 16 megabytes on in the php.ini file. That is why I am doing this. Saved it. We need to restart Apache after this. So it's done. So now we have to fire up our machine on the web and see all this and we will be able to install Drupal from the web GUI and let's find out again our 
machine IP. Machine IP is this. I believe I called it this. And I need dots, obviously. Machines on the web. We are reaching the directory. I haven't figured out, I mean, of course, the, it's asking me to upgrade to 531 or 521. Right now, I don't want to do that to this machine, but for now, I'm going to walk you through this without like, ignoring this error message. And I'm going to say save and continue. Choose language, English. There it goes. It's done. So here it's asking you for this uh, information. I'm going to say 7 alpha 6 on Amazon EC2, open to 9.10, and Postgres 8.4. Say import. Los Angeles. You're done. Visit your new site. Hola. And uh, go here. Okay, and you go to structure menus. So you're basically up and running. Oh, one more thing actually. Remember, hmm. that was not happening yesterday when I was doing my demo. <laughs> but. Sh 
should have I don't know why that's not working, but usually it should have two radio buttons which will tell you uh, enable clean URLs or not. And once you cl click on one, um, the clean URL piece, it will enable itself. For now, somehow, this is not working. So this is the view that I have because I'm in the signed in state. It's a, let's see. This is the view because I'm not signed in here. It's going to ask me to sign in. And at that point, I get the similar thing. So this is the basic installation of Drupal using the Postgres backend, Apache PHP on Amazon EC2's Google server. Can I help answer any questions? Do you think uh, you've learned something from this, and I'll, if you see this, uh, you have multiple Apache processes running. You have a Postgres process running here. So uh, if you want to check how much it has um, it is only using uh, 475 megs of memory right now. Uh, as uh, as your traffic goes higher, that number will go higher, and the Postgres will start incurring an overhead. And so does Apache. Another alternative configuration is to use a more lightweight server like Nginx or Light Lighty or Lightspeed, as it is called, and it has a lower memory footprint, a uh, lower overhead. Uh, resource footprint than Apache does, um, but again, Apache is very common. It gets you up and running very quickly for small to medium sized size uh, for small to medium sized sites, um, which is which are doing ten to uh, fifty thousand uh, page views a day or things like that. A small Ubuntu server on EC2 with this kind of uh, configuration of Apache PHP Postgres will serve you just fine. And if you get a sudden surge in gobs and gobs of traffic, then you have to either increase your machine size itself or do auto scaling in, uh, on with load balancing and what have you. So having done all of that configuration on your machine, at this point, would you, if you're going to shut it down, would you save it to your S3 account? No. So I'm not saving this clone to S3. Because making a machine image is a process, is takes time, and it has a variety of steps involved in uh, making that. Um, so there is a bunch of these. You have to install a, uh, EC2 API tools on this host machine, on the machine that you are trying to clone. Create keys. It's a long, detailed process that I have to go through. So if, so for example, for auto scaling and um, uh, load balancing purposes, then I need to fire up multiple machines with the exact same server configuration of the right version of Apache PHP All that. I would take a base instance, clone it, and fire the parent machine, the other scaled machines, all from that one single image. So that all those machines are exactly similar in footprint from a tech standpoint. Any other questions that you guys have? Connections that you have with MySQL? Oh, yeah, I actually have a post for that also somewhere. This one. So, this has, I think, something related to the image I created. And again, I have to test it by actually trying to create, uh, start off with a brand new elastic image of Eric Heyman. If I start with that and I don't think this error will come up, what happens is I go through a standard 
um, MySQL installation. I'll actually try it in front of you guys right now. I can say task cell. No, that's wrong. Sudo task cell, I think. Okay. So here, is there a MySQL? Start sudo apt get install mysql dash server and mysql dash client. Okay. Uh, okay. This is a unique step. So I can send a message here. I can set a password here for the mysql root user, or I can leave it blank. Every time I have set a password or left it blank. When I try to go right into it, after the installation, it fails on me. So I'll try to leave it blank this time and let's see how this works. While it is not mandatory, it comes back again, it's barking at me. This the password will not be changed. Okay, I, I, I'm leaving it blank. Okay, so it really does. one more time I'll try to. Okay, so I left it blank all three screens in a row, right? I mean, I'm not hallucinating now. I'm gonna say MySQL daemon started and I'm gonna say MySQL minus u root. Oh, shoot. See, I'm getting this error. It should let me write in. Right? So there's something I think I've done when I created my initial image uh, that I saved to S3 that is doing it because I didn't used to get this error. So there is a way to fix it. So uh, this is what I do to fix it. I stop the server. Start it in a safe mode. Type in MySQL. Okay. Look at this. What it says is there is only one user, Debian Sysmate. At this point, there's no root user. I mean, I, I thought I went through three screens of them declining the root user password, but it didn't create a root user for some reason here. So that is why it's not allowing me to go in as MySQL minus U root because the root username does not exist. So I take this. Oh, I have to. What is how to encrypt the password? Okay. Don't think this is going to work, but let me see if this does. If anyone's familiar with MySQL syntax, please help me. <laughs> Essentially, I'm entering a manual record into the MySQL user table to create a root user with the root password and giving it all the access in the world.
we are almost at the end of our session but come on in come on in so you have to find out there is a, a way to directly do an encryption of the 1 2 3 4 5 6 as a password uh, it's doing a select uh, star uh, there is equal of dual you're getting an encrypted value for uh, using the password into bracket that password that you want you get returned that value you put in that value right into your uh, that field and it will create a root user for you and then you are able to go in but right now because there is no root user somehow it's not uh, again why that happened i don't know but if there is no root user i cannot go in as root and obviously i don't have debian sys main account password so i can't go in as debian sys main so that is the issue i'm running into uh, i was running into and then i figured this piece out i got this thing done and i i should have one more step of how to do the encrypted password piece uh, about this so that's that's what was going on have you so like web admin or my php admin on so i have installed php my admin uh, after this after the mysql thing works for uh, postgres there is a pg admin right from a web interface standpoint and i have not installed that on ubuntu but from a standpoint of for drupal right unless you are really have, having to go into the database tables which hopefully you should not have to for a publishing system like this should just run itself at that point and actually you can uh, uh so do cspass and psql and no that's not uh, no uh, What is it? Oh shit! Okay. So this should quit. Anyone? Uh, this syntax. I'm running into those. Syntax issues there. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank you.